Support for Sports Page is provided by First Central Bank. Full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. By the University Store. The University Store is the official headquarters for Mules and Jenny's Emblem Clothing, Gifts, and UCM Memorabilia. Books, office supplies, art supplies, and more are available at the University Store, located on the lower floor of the Elliott Union on the UCM campus in Warrensburg by Parker Supermarket and Pharmacy, a home-owned and operated store that listens to its customers. Whether it's a hypoallergenic formula or a new exotic vegetable, Parker strives to serve the unique needs of the area. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics. Straight ahead on our final edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page for the fall semester, we'll visit with Brad Luce, the associate head coach of Mules Basketball, about the season opening win over Webster and Saturday's contest with Culver Stockton. Mules Wrestling is underway and we'll preview the season this week with head coach Justin Ensign. In our Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlights, we'll get to know Mules Basketball senior Reggie Stallings and Mules senior wrestler Nick Vitarisi. So stay tuned, your weekly inside look at UCM Mules and Jenny Sports is next. Mules basketball officially tipped off their season last Saturday with a win over Webster. This Saturday, the Mules play host to the Culver Stockton Wildcats at 2 p.m. at the Multipurpose Building. Mules head coach Kim Anderson is in Springfield today at a Missouri Sports Hall of Fame event honoring his legendary coach, Norm Stewart. So joining us now to talk Mules basketball is associate head coach, Brad Luce, Coach Luce, after 11 years, welcome to Sports Page. Thank you, Jonesy. Glad to be here. Well, for the folks who may not know Brad Luce, give us your background, how you got here, and what you've done in the sport. Well, I, uh, I started out playing at Austin P for my dad, and uh, when I was done there, I spent one year with him. Uh, following that year, I had uh, a couple jobs fall through on me, and uh, luckily Coach Anderson had somebody fall through on him on his graduate assistant spot. Um, we kind of ran into each other in the middle of the summer through a mutual friend, and Ten years, eleven years later, here I am. I'm like a bad cold. They can't shake me. <laughs> well, you've done a great job with the program. Two Final Fours, four conference championships, obviously, and you've been a big part of that. Last Saturday, let's talk hoops now. You guys had a close victory against Webster and then a week to prepare for the next game. What's this week been like for the program? Well, you know, obviously we didn't play as well as we'd hoped on Saturday. Um, Webster gave us a great game, and, and credit goes out to them. They did a great job. Uh, and you know we, we had a lot of errors in that game. We made a lot of uh, a lot of mistakes, and so this week we've been really kind of shoring up uh, our mistakes. You know we we didn't have the defensive discipline that we wanted to see on Saturday, and so it was kind of a wake up call for us. So the last few days have really been spent concentrating on uh, you know not making nearly as many mistakes defensively and and kind of getting better as a team. I know the practices have been intense in talking uh, to Coach A. Have the guys responded well to that? They have. Uh, you know. Obviously, we wanted to win that game by, on Saturday by 20-plus points, and, and that would have been great. But to be quite honest with you, I think by it being a close game, it woke us up a little bit. It let us know that we're nowhere near being where we want to be. And uh, therefore, the, we had the guys' attention this week, and, and you know they definitely responded well. We've had three great days of practice. Well, despite a sluggish effort maybe last week in the victory, it was still a, a cool day at the multi-purpose building. Uh, it was warm in the building, but it was neat from the standpoint that it was the first game with the new LED table, you see it there, the, the video board above, the new scores, tables, the multi came alive, it was neat to see. It really did. Uh, you guys in the administration portion of the uh, department have done a great job in making the game day experience, not only for basketball, but for football as well, you know, one of a kind in Division II. And, and we realize how fortunate we are to have this situation because not many Division II schools have what we have. Well, we're looking at highlights, the Mules and Webster from last Saturday, and the KMOS TV crew, the students, they did a tremendous job with the highlights, so we're seeing a lot of good plays 
from the Mules, but it was a, a game where you got off to a slow start. Credit to Webster. Landon Kurz, their assistant, was a GA here, knows what we like to do. So they come out in three-quarter court pressure, packed in a 2-3 zone, um, and, and really were very effective in that. I assume we're going to see a lot of that now. What's the key to being better against that style of defense? Well, you know, I think offensively we did okay. I mean, we didn't make open jump shots, which, you know, that, that's going to happen, especially early in the season. You know, like you said, Webster did a great job. They had a great game plan. When, when you come into a game and you know you're outmanned, you want to be able to limit the number of possessions in a game because the, the fewer the possessions, the greater the chances of you winning. And so they did a great job of that. They slowed the game down. They forced us into their pace. And, you know, obviously, like I said, we just didn't make open jump shots against the 2-3 zone. I think we executed better than what uh, than what we thought initially. There's Charles Hammock, number 32, a nice addition to the ball club. Yeah, Charles, Chuck, everybody, we call him Chuck on the team. He's done a great job. Uh, you know, he was a first team all region player of the year in, in uh, Coffeyville, Kansas, and he stepped in. And, and I think the further we go along, Chuck has really come into his own, and he, I think he's going to be a special player for us. There's a floater by Dominique Newton. Coach A challenged the guys. He kind of emptied the bench, brought the second unit in, and gave them a shot, trying to send a message, I know, to the starters. Yeah, you know, we're a talented team. Uh, one through 17, I think everybody can play. And uh, obviously, we've got two guys registered, so one through 15. But, you know, I think everybody on this team can play, and everybody knows that. Every day is a competition in practice, and if you don't do your job, there's somebody on that bench that's willing to step in and do it. There's Dominique Newton, number 11, uh, going back down the floor, 16 points, 9 boards. We're seeing a lot of highlights here of uh, Dominique slashing to the rim. That's really an important part of his game. He did a great job. You know, he, he's vital in what we want to do offensively, but especially against his zone. He flashed to the middle of the floor, and any time you face his zone, you want to get the ball to the middle of the floor. And, and he does a great job of getting open and then making a play once he catches the ball. Again, we're looking at highlights from last Saturday, the season opener, and there's Charles Hammer to the rim. He's a guy that can go outside and inside, and he was a key. As you went into the locker room down 10 in this basketball game, but you went on a 12-0 run to start the second half, and Charles was a big part of that. He did. Uh, we were a little tentative the first half offensively, and, and uh, he came out the start of the second half and definitely took the fight to Webster and uh, did a great job of of getting the ball to the hole and making some plays. You know, I know you wanted, as you said, to win this game by you know 20 plus or whatever, but a win is a win and we're seeing a lot of NAIAs beat D2s or D2s beat D1s. It's just kind of the way basketball is uh, here in the modern era. The positive is, as you see there, you were in a close game, and I think there's got to be some benefit to that, having to battle, having to grind, mm -hmm. having to play down the stretch. Sure, sure. I think, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you get you get more out of a close game than you do a, uh, a blowout. And you know, obviously, like I said, we, we definitely want to win by as many points as possible. But we got a lot out of that game. And I think we're a better basketball team because of it. And to touch on the points you said, you know, there's a lot of good basketball players out there, especially this day and age. And, you know, you can't take anybody for granted because, like I said, there's, there's just good, a, lot, a lot of good basketball players. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good teams. Again, as we're seeing the highlights, one thing that you notice with this group, as you mentioned, a very talented group, they're very unselfish. They share the basketball. It's it's not an issue in any way, shape, or form as you try to get this team going this year, coming off an MIAA title last year. It's just maybe getting everybody to understand their role. It's it's certainly not a selfishness issue at all. No, no, it's not. And we're almost unselfish to a fault. Uh, you know, we need we need guys to be more assertive offensively and look for their shot more. Uh, you know, we, we need guys to take their shot at their time, and, and that's what we've been trying to, uh, to preach to them the last couple weeks. You see it there, 219 to go. Mules up a pair. Tight game down the stretch. Webster actually had the ball uh, down one with under a minute to go, but we're going to see in a minute Matt Webb makes a big defensive play with a block shot. And then what we won't see, Lance Beckwith and Widget Washington go to the line, go 4-4 four, four combined at the stripe. Here's Webb's big defensive play here with, again, a one-point lead. Terrific play by Webb. It goes off the Webster player. He hit those free throws. So there was some really good poise and execution down the stretch to pull out the win. Yeah, there was. Uh, you know, uh, an uh, ugly win is better than a pretty loss any day of the week. Uh, we did make some plays down the stretch. But you know what? Webster made some plays down the stretch, too, to keep it close. And so... Uh, you know, like I said, we got a lot out of this game. Uh, you know, I think we're a better basketball team because of it, and, and I hope that this Saturday we come out and we do a better job. This team, as I mentioned, coming off an MIAA title a year ago, this team has eight seniors. Um, what are the key areas this team needs to continue to improve in to have a chance at another MIAA crown? Well, I think toughness, just overall toughness, is a key for this team. Uh, you know, our defensive discipline is really important right for us right now. I think we made a lot of defensive mistakes. You know, there's some 
different things that we, we try to stress to our team, like not letting the ball in the middle of the floor, having good closeouts, uh, you know, on our post defense, getting around, not letting the ball enter into the post as easily as it has been. And th I think those are the things right now that we definitely have to improve on to, uh, to be a successful basketball team. Well, Saturday, you mentioned it, it's the Culver Stockton Wildcats at 2 p.m at the multi-purpose building. What challenges do they present? I'm going to tell you what, they're a good basketball team. They, uh, they've they got a bunch of guards that can really play. They love to shoot the three. It's going to be a lot like, for those of you who remember Southwest Baptist last year, uh, very similar to the way they play. They're going to launch a ton of threes, and uh, we've got to do a great job of keeping the basketball out of the middle of the floor. They love to drive into the middle and then kick out to open shooters. And so we've got to be able to guard the ball and then get out to the three-point shooters and contest, uh, contest all open jump shots. And I know the guys have to be excited about the opportunity to get back out there. It's been seven days between games, and really you've had two game situations in 14 days. You went to your alma mater, Austin P to play your dad's team in an exhibition game, then had a week before the opener, and now a week before Culver Stockton. So a lot of practice, limited game opportunities. I'm sure the guys are excited to get out there under the lights. They are dying to get back on the floor and play a game because I know they're sick of us yelling at them. And, uh, you know, they, they want a chance for some ret retribution. Uh, you know, they're not happy with the way they played. You know, they're a little embarrassed of what they've done. And so uh, I think they're excited to get out there and prove that, that there were a better basketball team than what we showed last Saturday and I think they're excited to show the improvement that we've uh, accomplished over the last few days of practice. You know it's an important time for the players this time of year. You know fans may say oh these games are just getting you ready for the D2 games that are coming really uh, during Thanksgiving week. It's all D2 from there on out for the most part but 13 guys played against Webster. Obviously when you get into the heart of the season 13 guys aren't going to play every night. So maybe right now 8 through 10 or 7 through 10, uh, there's a lot of competition for who's going to be in that regular rotation, isn't there? Sure, and those are important guys to this team. I tell you what, we have probably the most challenging conference or non-conference schedule that we've ever had since we've been here, and and so we need to know who we can count on once we you know go up against uh, Southwest Minnesota and go up against Upper Iowa and and then on down the line. And so yeah, there is competition, and and not just in games, but uh, every day in practice, it's it's a battle. So again, fans, come on out to the multi Saturday, two o'clock, Culver Stockton, the opponent, and then it's off to Maryville Thanksgiving week on uh, Saturday of Thanksgiving week. I believe that's the 24th. And then Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend, the 25th, you will play two in-region Division II contests, Southwest Minnesota and Upper Iowa. And for fans that may not realize, you're regionalized in Division II. So these out-of-conference in-region games go a long way in determining whether you're going to make the NCAA tournament or not. So these are huge games on a neutral floor in Maryville on Thanksgiving weekend. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you what, they're both two really good teams. Southwest Minnesota uh, made the NCAA tournament last year. They made a run at the end of the year and got into the tournament. They've got everybody coming back. Uh, you know, I've watched them on film quite a bit here lately, and, and they're really a good basketball team. They really know how to play. They're unselfish. And so that'll be a great challenge. And then Upper Iowa presents a challenge all its own because they're a, a very patient team. They really run their offense. They're very structured. And they're going to make you guard for 35 seconds every time they have the ball. So it should be two great games. Uh, definitely be a good measuring stick for where we're at as a team and uh, I know our guys are excited to play that but uh, we got to take care of Culver Stockton first because they're going to present a, a great challenge in and of themselves. The next opportunity following Culver Stockton for the fans to see you at the multi-purpose building is Wednesday November 28th when Quincy comes to town. Another solid D2 team. Quincy beat you last year so this is a big game that the fans in Warrensburg will get a chance to watch that could go a long way in helping this team hopefully towards an NCAA tournament berth. Absolutely. Like I said, toughest schedule we've had since we've been here. Quincy comes in. They beat us last year. They've got a bunch of guys returning from last year's team. Uh, you know, they, they are absolutely a, a possible NCAA tournament team themselves, the top 25 type team. And so we're excited to get them. Obviously, they beat us last year. And so, uh, you know, we feel like we've got something to prove to them as well. This is Brad's 11th year, uh, as I mentioned, the associate head coach of Mules Basketball. And we've seen the MIAA evolve. It's now a 15-team league conference uh, action begins on December 5th at Fort Hay State and then home on December 8th, an afternoon doubleheader for the Jennies and the Mules against Emporia State on December 8th. And these games are always important because they're conference games, but now in a 15-team league, this is the only time all year we're going to see Fort Hayes or Emporia State. So the games seem to take on even more, more importance when you only play these teams once. Sure, I feel like I'm a football coach. <laughs> you know, I've always talked to Coach Clemens, and he's always complained about only getting to play guys once. Well, we're going to find out what that's all about. I guess it's good if you beat them, uh, but uh, going to be great games. Really excited about it. 
uh, it will definitely battle, be battle tested at that point. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we'll see what, what happens. But uh, this league's going to be great again. Uh, there's a bunch of good teams, as always. And, uh, you know, it's going to take a, a grind, and, and we'll see what we're made of. You're picked second in the MIAA preseason poll. It's a 15 team league. Last year you guys were able to uh, claim a share of the conference title and uh, I tell you this year it's even tougher. Lindenwood won 28 games last year. Uh, Central Oklahoma has been a regional power always competing for Lone Star Conference titles. Northeastern State won a national championship in this decade so uh, we just made the toughest league in the country even tougher didn't we? Yeah there's there's no easy games and uh, but that's why these guys come to play here. Uh, if they wanted to go somewhere easy they would have gone somewhere else. You know, we tell guys that this is uh, this is Division Two basketball, but it's really Division One basketball in terms of the talent level and and the uh, the type of teams you're going to play. And so, you know, that's why they're here. That's we want to play the best, and uh, you know, you definitely find out what you're made of. Again, your 11th year. Um, obviously, normally Coach A is on with us. Norm Stewart uh, having an event, the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, honoring him and some of his former great players uh, today, and that's why you're here. What's it like working for Kim Anderson, a guy who was a longtime assistant at Baylor and obviously at Mizzou, his alma mater? Uh, what's it like to be his associate head coach? You know, Coach A is the greatest to work for. Uh, obviously, I enjoy working for him. I would, if I didn't, I wouldn't still be <laughs> here. Uh, I think he likes working with me. If he didn't, I definitely wouldn't be here. But uh, you know, he, he's great to work for. He gives us a ton of responsibility. He lets us coach, and uh, as an assistant coach, that's really all you can ask for, somebody that trusts you to do your job, and, and he does that. And so we've had a lot of success, and uh, you know, a lot of the credit goes to him because he's done a great job leading us. Should be a fun year, too, with those eight seniors. Uh, and I know the great thing about those eight seniors is they won a league title last year, but we were left out of the NCAA tournament. So this is a group that's hungry. Yeah, definitely. You know, we keep talking about things to prove, and, and they've got something to prove. And uh, I definitely think they want to leave here with a ring. They, they know the tradition that we've established here at Central Missouri, and they want to be a part of that. And so, uh, you know, they, they, they're a small part of it last year with their conference title, but, you know, it was shared. And, and they definitely uh, want to win something on their own. They, want to, they, they aspire for bigger and better things. Great job, Coach Luce. Thanks for the visit. Thanks, Sean. Coming up next here on Sports Page, we'll get to know Mule senior guard Reggie Stallings. That's next here on KMOS TV. Coming to PBS, one of the season's most anticipated films. From Ken Burns comes a spellbinding and definitive epic. You could see this rim of dust rising. It was dark, black, scary. The Dust Bowl is a gripping oral history that's bringing our national past to life. We always had hope. The Dust Bowl, premiering Sunday, November 18th, only on PBS. The idea of the American dream is that everyone's got an equal opportunity. You just got to decide to play. We're not that kind of society anymore. The wealthy are getting an enormous percentage of all of the, the gains in the entire economy. Those at the top have done well. They've invested in policies that are favorable to them. Money is being used to buy results. That is the problem. That's how I used money. I know what I was doing. Award-winning vocal quartet Tonic Sofa continues to take a cappella to new heights. For 12 years, the group has captivated critics and fans alike with their soaring vocals, smooth harmonies, heartfelt lyrics, upbeat arrangements, and engaging stage presence. On Thursday, November 29th, Tonic Sofa is coming to the University of Central Missouri's Performing Arts Series in Warrensburg. With your $60 donation of support, you'll receive two gold level tickets to this special holiday show. Call 1-800-753-3436 to reserve your seats and support your local PBS station, KMOS-TV. Thank you. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. And welcome back to our final fall edition of Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. In this Sports Page student athlete spotlight, we get to know Mule senior guard Reggie Stallings.
I'm from Flint, Michigan. I'm born and raised. Um, started playing basketball because my father played basketball. He played, he was a really good basketball player in Flint. He played two years at Eastern Michigan University and growing up just seeing my dad playing and ducking, I'm like, man, I want to do those things when I get older. So my dad motivated me to play basketball at the age of, let's say, four. After high school, um, I attended Wayne State University my first, my freshman year. Um, did very well there. I felt like I, um, I wanted to go to a better school, a better program. So um, I decided to leave there and uh, went to Trinity Valley Community College um, due to injuries. Um, I broke my left foot, fifth metatarsal, so had surgery, and that kept me from um, going to NCAA to NCAA. So I had to go to junior college and play ball down there in Texas. Then now I'm here at, at UCM. Um, the environment. When I came here from on a visit, just talking to Coach A and talking to the players and actually seeing this big gym, I was like, man, this is Division Two. I came to this is Division Two, so you know, just just the, the winning the winning program got me here. Typical practice for me, I say it's you know it's tough. Uh, I start off with you know a little warm up. Y'all got to get warmed up. After getting warmed up, we do a little you know getting up and down the court. Then Coach breaks down. The, um, um, the, other, the opponent's team, and we just go at it. We just go at it for two, hour, two hours, three hours, maybe even four. If we break some rules, just playing. But um, it's tough. Coach always bringing that to the table to make sure everybody on the team is uh, bringing their best. It's aggressive practice. Um, this year's team has more leaders. We have eight seniors, and last year it was three leaders, including myself. Um, due to injury, I'm back again. I'm part of the eighth group, and more experience, I say, more experience this year. Um, Due to my injury, it was devastating. Um, the fourth game, no, second game of the season, I uh, blew up my ACL. I'll tell you, I was one of the most down times I ever experienced in my life. A lot of time on my back, um, praying to God, asking him why me, you know, trying to find questions. And I found a lot of questions, I found a lot of answers to those questions. And I realized um, everything happened for a reason. And I'm blessed to, to play another year with this um, collective group of guys. And, it was tough. Um, I was always two months ahead of schedule. I was working my tail off, trying to trying to prove to myself that I can I can bounce back and be even better, be even great, greater than I was before. And the motivation is that I've been through so much with my ACL injury that I, can, I think I can overcome a lot of obstacles in life. Yes, I do consider myself a leader on this team because I've been here now, going on three years, and I feel like I know what Coach Anderson wants and what to expect from Coach Anderson. I feel like. First and foremost, me being the guy who's been here for years can let the other guys know what to expect before they step on the court. Uh, outside of basketball, I'm involved with SAC, the SAC committee. Um, I like drawing. <laughs> I'm a good doodler. I draw a lot, a lot of sketching. That was my first you know, career pathway. I was going to be architecture, but I hate math. So um, I love singing. People don't, know that. People don't know that about me. I like singing. I sing a lot. Um, that's it. My major is criminal justice, and after college, I like to be a um, U.S. Marshal. Also, a criminal investigator. And the reason why I like criminal investigation is because something like CSI and the creepy stuff, like people don't like the blood splatter. I like it. I want to get I want to get down and dirty and know and know things about that more in depth. Um, one thing about my dad, he's um, he's a hard worker. Since since day one, I can remember like waking up in the morning. Dad's not here because he's he's up going to work. He's never been late for work, never, never had any excuses. I feel like if my dad never had any excuses to provide for me and my family. Why should I have any excuses to, have, to do things I like having fun with? I like playing basketball, I don't have any excuses. It's fun, just continue to play ball, you know. My dad, no matter what, he always there for me and when things are bad, that's the one person I call because he's a military guy, he's been through a lot and I feel like his life battles can relate to sports, sporting events. So I would, I would call him for advice and asking for motivation. My experience here at UCM has been great. It's been a lot of, you know, a lot of ups and a lot of, a lot of downs, but I feel like overall it's been a great experience because a guy like Coach Anderson always brings the best out of me and he's a wonderful guy and he's, he's a guy you would love to play for. He's one, he's one of those coaches who you hear about on TV. Uh, it can't be true and like, man, he's that kind of guy you want to play for. He wins and he'll make you a winner. The senior from Flint, Michigan was an all-MIAA defensive team member two seasons ago, and after missing last season with a knee injury, Stallings has put in the time to be ready for this, his senior season. 
Off the court, Stallings will graduate with a degree in criminal justice from UCM this December. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look back at how Central Missouri's fall sports teams performed this past week, along with a few winter squads who are underway. And speaking of that, we'll visit with Mules wrestling coach Justin Ensign. All of that's on the way when our final fall edition of Sports Page continues right after this. Next time on the Dust Bowl. Grasshoppers mostly were crawling. A new plague descends on the southern plains. They ate everything in sight. Some families pull up stakes and move on. We had nothing left. There was no reason to stay. And a president must decide if the plains can be saved. We shall have on our hands a new man-made Sahara. Don't miss the conclusion of the Dust Bowl. I choose to be independent, to blaze my own trail. I choose what to create, how to organize, and where to share. Choose Red choose began as an inspiration and has grown into I a way of life. For, Ever since the Choose Red campaign began in January 2011, students have been at the heart of the I effort. Red All of our ads feature current Central. UCM students. Who better to tell choose the UCM red. story than choose those who have red. experienced what it means choose to choose Red and the opportunities they've had because of that choice. In August of 2012, the office responsible for development of the campaign held open auditions in the Elliott Union. University relations staff members met more than 100 talented students who made the decision to choose red. The students shared their stories and their talents with us in hopes of being able to become part of the official Choose Red campaign. UCM students who audition will have the chance to be in any number of Choose Red campaign materials, such as TV commercials, 30-second radio spots, web videos, billboards, brochures, ads, and numerous print publications. Even Central Man stopped by to add to the fun and excitement of Choose Red Auditions 2012. With so many students willing to be part of the campaign, it's no wonder a record number of students have once again decided to Choose Red. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. And once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV. Coming up in just a moment, we'll visit with Mules wrestling coach Justin Ensign. But first, let's take a look at how all the Mules and Jennies performed this past week. And we start with Jenny's basketball. They're 2-0 after an impressive start to the season. Last Saturday, the Jens defeated Webster 92-49 as newcomer Brianna Lewis led the way with 19 points. The Jens scored 41 points off turnovers in the victory. Monday night, the Jens went on a 28-0 run the final 13 minutes and 10 seconds of the first half, and they cruised to an 87-37 win over Evangel. Once again, Brianna Lewis led the way for the Jennies with 20 points as the Jens improved to 2-0. Jenny's Volleyball finished third in the MIAA regular season and opened the MIAA tournament as the three seed, hosting the sixth seeded Northwest Missouri State Bearcats Tuesday night. The Jens defeated Northwest 3-1 in their first postseason contest of 2012. Carly Soika had 18 kills in the victory. The eighth-ranked Jens now 25-5, and, and they advanced to the semis of the conference tournament to take on fourth-ranked Washburn, the second seed, Friday in Kearney, Nebraska. The 12th-ranked Jenny's soccer team defeated eighth-ranked Southwestern Oklahoma 3 to nothing in cold and rainy conditions last Sunday in the semis of the NCAA Central Region Tournament at the South Recreation Complex. Carly Stanley scored a goal and had two assists for the number one seed at Jenny's as they advanced to the NCAA Round of 16 and the Central Region title match Friday at 1 Central in Allendale, Michigan against the two seed Minnesota State Mankato. And the sixth ranked Jenny's bowling team captured the title of the Valparaiso Invitational last weekend. Natalie Jimenez led the way for UCM with a 216.6 average. She was one of three Jennies named to the all tournament team at the event. The Mules wrestling season is officially underway, and joining us now to preview his third year as head coach is Justin Ensign. Coach Ensign, welcome back to Sports Page. Oh, well, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Well, let's talk about uh, the team. What excites you about the 2012 2013 Mules? Um, you know, I think it, we got a pretty good group. I think we've, we've got it narrowed down to a real good group of kids. And, you know, I got a lot of young guys, a lot of new guys. You know, I, I, with our team last year, we didn't have a lot of experience. So I went out and got some transfers and some guys who had experience. And, you know, like, I, I really like how this group is developing. You know, um, you know Nick Vitarisi, um, he's our only senior, but it's his only second year with us. So, But he's really now starting to develop into a true leader of our team. And 
Um, you know, I got some transfers out of Tim Twakoy, uh, junior college All-American. He's developing into a leader, and it's nice having that coming from your biggest guy in the room. And, you know, Ty Lathan, a uh, transfer from Northern Illinois, uh, he's doing a real good job. And, you know, and I've got now um, all but maybe one or two guys are guys that I've brought in, you know. Um, and the one or two that are still here that they're guys I help bring in anyway, which is nice. But um, I really like how this group started to finally develop along. And, you know, I got some real tough freshmen, uh, Hunter Neighbors, who plays that are open, and, you know, Aaron Ingle, and just a good group of guys, you know. Maybe they're, they're not quite there this year, but, you know, two, three, four years down the road, they're going to be guys that were, you know, stepping in and, and doing big things for us. You know, it's an exciting time for wrestling at UCM and in the MIAA, too. It's an MIAA sport again for the first time since 1986. What does that do for your program and for wrestling in this part of the country? Um, I think it's great, and, you know, and I, I heard Coach Luce talk about how tough our, our league is now, and, and, and it's the same with us. You know, we have the national champs, Nebraska Kearney now, and Central Oklahoma, who's, who's the defending regional champ for us, and, and uh, Lindenwood's an NAI power. You know, they got a, a boatload of NAIA titles, and uh, it makes it that tough, and, and we try to sell our guys on being competitive and going out there and competing hard, and, you know, and you want to go prove yourself. Like I said, I got a pretty young group of guys, and I think that are pretty talented, and they want to prove themselves. Well, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and also it does great, you know, um, for on campus, the community, um, just our area, you know, and, and you can sell that. And, and people you know, on campus here in the community, they get conference titles. They get the conference championship. Now, it doesn't mean anything in the way of our qualifying like it does in other sports, but it's still a big deal, and it's still something I, I'm, you know, me and my staff, we're making very important to us to win it. And it gives you more duels. Fans yeah. like duels. You know, they like that team result. Obviously, wrestling is a tough individual sport, but to have that team result and to have those conference matchups now, I think that just really adds a dimension, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what we're trying to do, you know, grow a fan base and, and always trying to add more fans. And, and fans understand dual meets. You know, they may not get the open tournament. Right. They may not, you know, quite get the national tourna tournament scoring system. But they know you line up your team, I line up my team, and, and who, you know, whoever comes out on top, you know, they, they can figure that out. They can figure out pins. They can figure out decisions, major decisions pretty easily. So, and, yeah, it's a very fan-friendly fan system. And, and yeah. Well, Sunday, you uh, got the season started in a big way. It's the UCM Open at the Multipurpose Building, and traditionally, Justin, it is one of the top early season events in the country, regardless of division. You had 350 guys competing in this event. Yeah, it's, and it's always a tough one. It's probably the toughest tournament we go to all year, uh, but it's a great, great home event. It's, it's a lot of work on our end, but I think it's worth it, and I personally, I like sleeping in my own bed more than traveling anyway. But uh, it's a good first chance to go out and see guys. You know, there's Division One schools there, top Division Two guys, NEI guys, and, and top junior college guys. But, but yeah, and it was good to get out there and, and try it out and see how we do against, you know, not the same guys we practice every day, so. You know, before we get into the guys, and we will, you, you mentioned this event, and it's 350 guys, and you've got to bracket them all, and, and then you got to run the event. You've got some amazing volunteers that help this uh, and events like this move along smoothly, including Sarah Bailey, who works here at KMOS TV. I just wanted to give you a minute to recognize that group because they're really the unsung heroes. Oh yeah, I mean, if they weren't there, I probably wouldn't do these tournaments. You know, I have, uh, you know, David Curtis has been with us for a number of years, helps with, you know, running the pro tournament, helped me getting it all organized, seeds, and Sarah Bailey, same thing, doing all the matchups and helping at the head table, make sure things run. And I have Shelly Culp, who runs the tournament on a computer program and make sure everything gets inputted, you know, all of our results, um, making sure the bracket runs smoothly and everything's done properly, especially because we have to keep accurate stats on everything. And, and uh, I think we're blessed, you know, uh, uh, Dorothy Mayab, who's an alum, and also um, her husband's one of our, our, our refs for this tournament, um, is uh, also announces the Division II National Tournament. And I'm very fortunate she volunteers her time to come down here and, and doesn't, I don't give her many breaks, but she's there from, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. just, you know, helping me make sure everything goes well. Well, they do a great job for the program, and I know it's much appreciated. Let's talk about the student athletes now. What positive surprises maybe did you take away from this event? Um, you know, I saw a lot of good things, obviously. I mean, you're, you always want to do better. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, I think it was great. I thought, you know, 125, you know, last year we were, it was a thin weight for us. But even, you know, you see Ty Balti there. I mean, there's a kid who took got his first one in January. Well, there, you know, he, there he's battling the number one seeded guy and I thought could have done a little better. But yeah, won this first match of the year, you know, instead of waiting until January. And, and at that same weight, a true freshman, Hunter Neighbors, coming out and taking six for us, um, really kind of hopefully get his confidence going. And, you know, uh, our, our big transfer, Ty Lathan, coming out and getting third. And, 
You know, he had been out a little bit the week before with a little, with some little injuries, but uh, you know, really looked good considering he hadn't had much time in the wrestling mat. So, how about your top guys? How'd they do? Um, good. You know, I thought Todd Breyer came out, competed really hard. Tim Twuckley got a couple wins early. I mean, he's disappointed. I think he's one of those guys who's who's looked really good in the room, but could have could have done a little better. So. Let's talk about something that I think is really important uh, to the success this season. Last year you had a lot of injuries. Competition in, in the room and depth. Do you have more of that? Do you feel good about that? Um, you know what, there's a couple weights where you're always going to be thin. We've had some guys get hurt. Um, and you know you can in the put um, but yeah right now I got you know I think I'll have three starters out this weekend two of which you've had some surgeries they'll be back but they'll be back hopefully by the new year um, both both of them but you know but I have guys ready to step in and hopefully get the job done when it when it, until they're ready to come back and you know I know last year I didn't have a heavyweight well I got three good guys pushing each other there so that we're very fortunate there and you know 125 like I said one kid will have five you know, so I'm very a lot, very, much more deep this year. You know, we took the time with our recruiting to really go out and find kids who, you know, not only are good, better wrestlers, but you know, good people that are going to stick it out, and then we can, you know, hopefully develop into, you know, great wrestlers. And you've got to have that depth so that you can challenge guys in practice, so that there's another guy pushing them, and that they can also practice and and, and get their work in. Yeah, and that's the interesting about our thing about our sport. I mean, you, there's only so much you can do on your own. You need somebody to work with, and and we try to, you know, like I said, and we talk about being competitive. We want our guys to be competitive no matter what it is and and having that somebody in that room that either wants your spot or is the weight below you or above you and that can push you in the practice room really helps you know make those strides and make those weekly adjustments that you know get you from you know being you know being where you want to be at the end of the year so. when you look at this team where do you have the most depth where do you have the most concern where maybe you don't have enough um, you know, I I went 25. I was concerned coming this year. This year, but after this week, you know, I got three or four or five guys there that that I think one goes down. I can be competitive there. You know, 133. I mean, Luke McClure, who I I think will be the guy there. He's got a knee injury, and I'm not too deep there. And 141 usually is a deep spot for us, but with some injuries and and some guys moving up weights, um, I, I, you know, Eric Mateo hasn't competed yet, and it looks like he won't be ready this weekend. Um, that's somebody who won, you know, over 30 matches for us last year, you know, so um, that's a concern, but, you know, I think we're a much th deeper, you know, from 49 all the way up to heavyweight, you know, than, than we've ever been, um, you know, and I, I, you know, like I said, we're still trying to get some guys back and, and get some guys better, but like I said, I th we still got over 30 guys in the room that want to be there and want to battle, so it makes, it makes my job more fun, and I'm more excited to be there, and then in turn, I hope they're more excited to work and because and, our sport is hard, you know, and it's and it's a grind and it's a longer season. Um, you know, these winter sports are very long seasons, and, and our sport being so physical and demanding, um, yeah, it, it, you, you got to want to got to make it exciting, got to make it, you know, they want to be there. And you're building this with young guys. You got a lot of young guys in the program, which I know uh, excites you when you go into the room and you see the potential for these guys. Yeah, once, like I said, one senior. Um, you know, one or two juniors, and uh, and like I said, our best guy. You know, we voted on captains the other week, and and three of the four captains are sophomores, whether they're redshirt or true sophomores. But yeah, I mean that shows those are those are three guys who are now leaders of this team, and will be leaders for the next you know hopefully three years if if everything works out for them. And obviously, yeah. Nick Vitarisi is a guy that's uh, kind of the. Uh, the top guy uh, returning for you in terms of being all region last year, and I know he's got big aspirations this year. Yeah, yeah, and you know he's gone up a weight class, which will be huge. I think you know I think he wore his body out. You know he beat you name him, he beat him last year. I mean he beat several guys on the podium, but he didn't do it when it mattered. And that's and that's the thing about our sport is we're so much judged on what we do in the postseason and you know national tournaments and you know qualifying and winning it. And, so I think he'll be happier and healthier for the long haul because it is a long haul, and, and he's definitely stepped up to be the vocal leader. And you know, he's always working hard. He's always doing what we ask, whether it's the right thing in the classroom. He's got great grades. You know, doing the right thing off the mat, on the mat, leaving a good lifestyle. So he's a good role model for. We got a bunch of young guys and a bunch of you know. So there's somebody he can look up to and be like, hey, if I do things that way, I'll be successful. So and that always helps as a coach, of course. Well, Saturday you're heading to Kearney, Nebraska for the UNK Open. Uh, again, a, a fellow MIAA school, a national champ. I'm sure the competition will be stiff in Kearney on Saturday.
Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen all the draws, but we got, yeah, of course, we're going to the home of the Division II national champions and a, a conference, you know, the, the number one uh, ranked team in our conference and the, in the nation. So, yeah, it's exciting. And, and again, I think we'll, we'll go see some different teams, more teams out west and up north go to that one than, than come to our tournament last week. So it's good to see some different teams, but I think we're going to see some D1 guys from those, you know, those maybe Air Force Academies, Northern Colorado, um, but also some Division II teams like Western State usually goes there and, and um, schools out in that Colorado. Colorado area as well so it'll be a good test and you know there's two divisions a, a, a freshman sophomore division then a big open division so we got young guys who maybe didn't have a good week and and we're disappointed that can go you know get some wins and, and hopefully you know get a chance to get a lot of matches where they can work on these things these things we've been you know beating them over the head with and and the technique and, and making these adjustments that they need to make so hopefully get and get some confidence and then which is so huge in our sport you know, if, if, if you're feeling good and you're wrestling good and, you know, it can overcome those things maybe you are lacking if you are confident and you're feeling good about your, what, how you're wrestling and how, what the things you're doing. Speaking of feeling good, I know you feel good about your staff. you got a couple of guys that are big-time wrestlers themselves uh, that work with you. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I went out, I was able to bring uh, Blake Gillis back to Central Missouri, which is huge. I mean, that's a guy who's top five on the Olympic ladder. You name it, he's done a national champ, uh, four-time finalist in college. He's placed... Uh, at Midlands, as he was as a Division Three guy, placed at Midlands, probably the toughest Division One tournament, and just his attitude and his confidence, and you know, and his winning personality, and, and how he carries himself. It's just, you know, I, I didn't like the way the direction we were going last year. I didn't like our attitudes we had with these young guys, and um, yeah, that that that's something that it, it's nice too to have the biggest, scariest guy you know. You know, he's 275 pounds of, of pure athleticism. You know, standing behind you, and we, you know, you know, he's, and he's a great assistant. He's very loyal, and he, and he believes in what we're trying to do and what I'm trying to do and that's it's been very awesome and I brought in um, you know uh, Connor McDonald uh, he was you know you name it again he's done it as well uh, an all-american in college uh, division one national qualifier before he transferred to a division two school and uh, he's, he's got my little guys I mean he's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my 25 pounders he's in there doing it with them and and taking them under his wing watching film with them getting extra workouts with them and doing everything we need to do and you know I still have two of my assistants back from last year Brad Hughes a local guy from Knob who works his butt off and um, comes in when you know and uh, and wrestles hard and uh, Cody Gillenwater who is you know a national qualifier for me and and bleeds you know bleeds for this university and has nothing but pride and and also is kind of a nice little enforcer in my middleweight just g going after those guys so it's been good I'm really happy with my staff right now fan friendly schedule too in January. This is our last show till January. Beginning of January the schedule's loaded up with the duels and then the dinker open. But uh, talk about that. In January fans are gonna have a chance to come out to the multi and see a lot of mules wrestling. Yeah, I and it's something that, you know, it, it fell together. I mean I wanted I was trying to get, you know, teams in for, for dates anyway, but nice thing with this conference schedule, you know, Nebraska Carney has to come here <laughs> now. But getting them in and, and also Newberry, you know, I, I reached out to them before about coming in for duels and, and they it's able to work and they're a top five program um, you know Newman's coming in that same day they got some tough kids uh, and then two days later we're gonna wrestle uh, Watchdog Baptist in the top ten uh, Ashland and Fort Hay State and another conference foe but both of which were in the top 15 last year and and you know yeah we, we couldn't get into national duels we didn't have the returning points but we got national duels coming to our house in the multi and out and like I said I got these transfers and these young guys who who want to prove themselves and and go out and see top level competition well it's coming here to the multi and you know win or lose I think it's something that's going to make us better for the long haul and, and hopefully at that point where you know we're, we're wrestling well and we're feeling good and we're healthy to be competitive and, and sneak some of these teams and show them that you know hit them in the mouth let them know we're here and, and we're not you know you, you may be the returning national champs but it's not your title yet you know we, you know that's where we're trying to preach to them and, and yeah I, I think you know it's being this sport the way it is is you got to want to be the best you got to want to you know and we're giving them an opportunity to compete with the best so that's yeah that's what we've been trying to drive home exciting time for the program you talk about a young lineup with a lot of potential a lot of great matchups at home return of a conference the MIAA uh, again exciting time Justin thanks for the visit we'll talk to you again right. uh, in January thank you for having me Sean appreciate it in just a moment on sports page we'll get to know Mule senior wrestler Nick Vitarisi that's next right here on KMOS TV Anna and Bates are good people. Their relationship evolves from a mutual understanding of each other and the fact that they're both very moralistic people, very good people deep down, you know, have come through very different journeys in life to get to the point they're both at when they meet. 
She's already um, a very emotionally evolved human being. She's very honest and caring, um, but she's quite tough as well. You know, she doesn't suffer fools gladly and she's not afraid to speak her mind. And Anna just really appreciates Bates as a human being and, and how kind and generous and, you know, and all those good things that he is. And they get to know each other really well before they embark on a relationship. I think there's something really quite romantic about you know, going back to basics and having the courtship, even though it's, it's a roller coaster of a courtship for Anna and Bates. I'm a married man, forget me, please. I couldn't, not ever. It's quite a beautiful relationship to be able to track over such a length of time, and it's great to get the, the, screen, the amount of screen time that we have to be able to make this relationship such a slow burn. It won't be long now. Begin planning your Thanksgiving celebration on Saturday, November 17th and Sunday, November 18th. Juicy turkey, mouth-watering side dishes, family and friends gather to give thanks. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. I'm from Bloomington, Indiana, and I started wrestling when I was in sixth grade. Um, actually, I didn't make the basketball team in middle school, and so I went out for wrestling, and it's been my sport ever since. It's kind of a little short for basketball also, so. The reason I came to UCM to wrestle, my, the safety program here, and I was recruited by a coach last year who was a GA, and I fell in love with the program, the athletic program and the schooling program. My coaches this year are awesome. Um, obviously last year I, my coaches were great. Uh, we lost our GA coach and we picked up a new GA and an assistant coach this year. And uh, I wouldn't trade them for anything right now. Um, coach Ensign's awesome, Coach McDonald, uh, Coach Gill, and uh, Coach Gillis. They're, they're great. Um, they're awesome. My teammates are awesome. Last year I was the only one or only 141 pounder and this year I bumped up to 49. We have four guys at 149 right now, myself uh, and three freshmen, Michael or Westbrook, Aaron Engel and Brigham West and I mean they're all like brothers to me. Um, they're good guys. Right now I live with uh, the 141 pounder Eric Mateo and uh, I mean I can honestly say he's one of my best friends and will be. Um, for my whole life. I mean, it's wrestling. Wrestling is a sport where you're battling each other every day and you're mad at each other and want to throw punches in the room and outside you guys are best of friends. So um, it's a very bonding and very rewarding sport. Really bumping up this year has kind of been a, uh, a last minute change. I was planning on going 141, but uh, at the beginning of the year my weight wasn't falling off as much as I wanted it to. and I'd bulked up over the summer. My coach had said that I looked bigger and stronger. Um, I worked all summer doing masonry and concrete work, so I mean, I was packing bricks, um, wheelbarrow, and mortar, so um, obviously I've gotten stronger. As for the difference between 141 and 149, it's just really a little bit of size. They're still mid class weight, and the guys are scrappy, fast, strong, so um, it's going to be the same thing, just a little bit stronger. I do consider myself to be a leader on the wrestling team. Um, I don't. I'm the only senior on the wrestling team this year, so I feel like I have a little. I have a lot of the freshmen and younger guys looking up to me. Uh, we have several transfers on the team that are uh, sophomores and juniors, and they've had past experience, past success, 
and I feel like they're, they're also leaders on the team, but I do feel that the fact that I'm the only senior on the team does make me put me in a leadership role. A role model for me within rest, the wrestling organization would have to be my dad. Um, he coached me all through high school and then has been, in, been very influential in my wrestling career um, throughout college. Um, all of my coaches, I'd have to say, have been very influential also um, and would be role models. For a specific individual um, to stick out and say, this is why I wrestled, um, I can't really say there is. I wrestle for myself and to be the best that I can. My major is safety management with an environmental health minor. Um, and I'd like to work for a construction company. Uh, I'd like to work nationally or globally um, with that. And I'd like, to tra I'd like to travel with it, being a safety advisor consultant for a company. Outside of wrestling, I'm a SAC representative. Um, I guess that is still through athletic program. Um, I really like to climb, rock climbing. I know when I'm done wrestling and schooling, I'm going to get a lot more involved in outdoor activities. I'm excited for this season. Um, looking forward to it. And uh, I see myself doing very well. I see myself on that podium this year. This year, my plan is to be a national champ. Um, I really, I believe that. I set that forth. Our coaches have had us have write goal sheets down every every week, and uh, that's been my goal since the end of last season when we started doing that. The 149-pounder from Bloomington, Indiana was all-region last year, posting 28 wins to lead the Mules. And the safety management major has his sights set on an All-American season here in 2012-2013. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the Mules and Jennies are competing this weekend as we put the finishing touches on our final fall edition of Sports Page right after this timeout. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Award-winning vocal quartet Tonic Sofa continues to take a cappella to new heights. For 12 years, the group has captivated critics and fans alike with their soaring vocals, smooth harmonies, heartfelt lyrics, upbeat arrangements, and engaging stage presence. On Thursday, November 29th, Tonic Sofa is coming to the University of Central Missouri's Performing Arts Series in Warrensburg. With your $60 donation of support, you'll receive two gold level tickets to this special holiday show. Call 1-800-753-3436 to reserve your seats and support your local PBS station, KMOS-TV. Thank you. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. For one final time this weekend in 2012, welcome back to Sports Page. Before we put the finishing touches on our fall schedule of shows, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to follow the Mules and Jennings. 
The 8th ranked Jenny's volleyball team will be in Kearney, Nebraska Friday for an MIAA tournament semifinal match with the 4th ranked Washburn Lady Blues. The winner of that match will face the UNK Emporia State winner for the tournament title on Saturday. The Jens are ranked 3rd in the all-important Central Region rankings this week. The NCAA Tournament Selection Show will take place Sunday night at 9 Central at NCAA.com and the top 8 teams from the Central Region will advance to the tournament. 6 teams from the region are ranked in the top 8 in the nation this week. The MIAA champion and 12th ranked Jenny soccer team is in Allendale, Michigan to take on 17th ranked Minnesota State Mankato on Friday at 1 p.m. Central for the NCAA Division II Central Region Championship. The winner of that match will face the Grand Valley Wisconsin Parkside winner on Sunday for the right to go to the Division II Final Four. You can watch a free webcast of Jenny soccer this weekend through a link we will have available at ucmathletics.com. The 6th ranked Jenny's bowling team will take part in the Maryland Eastern Shore Invitational Friday through Sunday in Princess and Maryland. The Mules wrestling squad will be in Kearney, Nebraska this Saturday for the UNK Open. Tyler Stuber of the Mules cross country team qualified to compete in the NCAA Division II National Championship race this Saturday in Joplin. The Mules basketball team will return to action Saturday at 2, hosting Culver Stockton at the Multi. We'll have the broadcast for you on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, WarrensburgRadio.com, and at tip-off on 90.9 The Bridge. The Jennings basketball team will play their fourth game in eight days at the Multi on Sunday as they host St. Mary's of Texas in a Division II contest. Tip-off Sunday set for 1.30. We'll have the broadcast on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, and WarrensburgRadio.com. And with that, we conclude this edition and the fall season of the Central Missouri Sports Page. We hope you enjoyed the shows each week, and we invite you to tune in again in January as we bring you the winter and spring seasons of Sports Page. In the meantime, for all the information on the Mules and Jennies, visit our website, ucmathletics.com. Until January, for our entire hardworking crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching the Central Missouri Sports Page here on KMOS-TV, Missouri PBS. Support for Sports Page is provided by Parker's Supermarket and Pharmacy in Warrensburg. Parker's works hard to supply grocery staples and spices to cook Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, and Thai cuisine. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience for everyone. By First Central Bank, full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. And by Union Station. Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs. Campus-compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus, on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics.